everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Girls with Dogs podcast. I am Kimberly, the blogger behind Keep the Tail Wagging, and I'm here with my dear friend, Kathy, the blogger behind Groovy Golden Doodles, and we are Girls with Dogs. So how you doing, Kathy? Well, I've been better, but you know what? I think I'm going to survive. I have finally succumbed to COVID. Not happy about it. Disappointed, actually. Was really kind of down. Um, it's almost like I had to turn in like some kind of a badge that I've been wearing. <laughs> I had not had COVID yet, but, um, it's not fun. Nope. Um, but you know, I will survive. That's good. So, other than that, I miss you. It feels like ages since we've talked. I know. So this is exciting for m- many, many different reasons, but you've been doing okay. You've been doing okay. Well, yeah. that's good. <laughs> I went up to DC to play mommy for about 10 days and I came back. Um and lots going on in Charleston and lots going on at work. So this stay at home thing right now didn't come at a good time. But is there ever a good time to get sick? No. No, no, no never. So I can relate now to when you were sick. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun. But on the flip side, we got an exciting episode today. You know, my heart has been skipping a beat. Listen, I rested all day yesterday and this morning with anticipation of just having a conversation. (laughs) The myth, the man, I'm sorry, (laughs) of the man that I have gotten so many people excited about because I truly, truly met every single time I said, who the hell is Billy? I'm going to let him in. (laughs) So ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) I'm here to tell you on this crisp October afternoon that if it wasn't for Kimberly Gucci <laughs> to tell me one day, would you stop steaming vegetables and looking for vegetable broth? Just go buy some green juju. And I <laughs> said, some what? Oh, it's called just greens. Just go get it. It's so good for your dog. The boys will love it. Well, I listened. I went. I purchased. They did. And uh, for a long time, I stopped steaming um, human vegetables. So... I never associated Billy Holcomb with Green Juju. Hookman, Billy Hookman. Hookman, Hookman. I'm from the North. When I saw his name, I said Hookman, but Hookman. But I never, ever really associated any human with Green Juju. And I don't know why. It's my fault. But, you know, hey, I'm being honest. So well, now you know I'm not lying that I'm not making up this person. Podcast, every time you wanted to sound (laughs) official, you would jump in with this. Well, I was talking to Billy. <laughs> and, you know, Billy said that you can use coconut <laughs> oil with any kind of broth because it's just great for their gut. And Billy this and Billy that. And one day I had enough and I just said, who the hell is Billy? This and is, this is quite the uh, <laughs> intro here. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you have to wait. You don't understand. When I finally found out who you were, Oh my God, Kimberly will tell you, I started (laughs) back then. You got, do you really know him? Do you, (laughs) can you get Billy on the podcast? I am, I am, I am highly overrated. Trust me. (laughs) This is really one hell of an intro because all of our listeners have wanted to hear from you. So hi, Billy. So nice to meet you. So good to see you. Here's my Jess Green's. Oh, nice. Just, Looks great. I just took him out of the bag and put him in a jar. Yeah, no, I uh, I do the same thing with my liver treats that are by the back door for my dog, which is right by my feet. So I'm very uh, <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> so how's it going, Billy? Uh, it's going well. Um, it's I live in Pennsylvania and it's I think it's like peak fall where I'm at. So we're trying to do all the fall things and, you know, take a million videos of my daughter doing picking up leaves and et cetera. So um, that's kind of where we are in life right now. How old is she? Uh, she will be 18 months. Nice. And 
And today my wife was counting the number of words that she can say to see if she's advanced or not. So is she advanced? All, I think so. Yes. I, think so. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but you know, I'm just, you know, here we are. You did ask. So brag, really brag. Well, you should have, this should be a very chaotic and fun holiday season for you at her age. Yeah, I think so. And, and my dog is now over a year old, so he's, he's kind of settling in. And I think they're about to reverse roles where, um, you know, he would terrorize her, but now I think it's going to be a little bit of her terrorizing him. She, she pets him now. And sometimes I catch her just like kind of going like yeah. this on him, you know, and I'm like, I saw that. <laughs> it's like, you need to be a little gentle. Um, and you notice too, I have this bowl of candy behind me. So I do. I'm, um, I'm surprised. I well, thought how festive. Um, Kimberly always just has the vacuum cleaner behind her. Yes. Vanessa. Well, this is for the kids that will eventually be here um, for trick or treating. Although, for some reason, we get it like a month early and it's just sitting there. So you have to walk by candy every day, which is not an easy thing for me. The only other thing I'll tell you, which is highly embarrassing as well, and then I'm out. I just walk off the podcast. It's fine. Anyway. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I'll say is that last night I was trying to slice bread and I cut my finger with doing the bread. And then I went upstairs to get a bandaid and stubbed my toe really bad walking <laughs> up the stairs. So this is, this is my life now. So I don't really know what's happening. I'll be 40 next year. So maybe I'm paying the price. I don't know, but you're breaking. Yes. <laughs> you're breaking. It's okay. You, you... I shouldn't take such glee in that. What? I think I'm evil. I don't know. So I met Billy, I think I, I don't know years, but I say 2017. I don't know if that's true or not at super zoo. And I didn't know who he was. I just knew he was one of many people that I was meeting that year. And I thought he looked like Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> so, but I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember who I just knew he looked like an actor and I couldn't remember who it was. And I think a few days after Super Zoo, I texted him and it was just so, oh, it was Jake Gyllenhaal. I was so proud of myself. There is a resemblance. <laughs> yeah, see? Exactly. Exactly. I feel I'll really good it. about this because I'm not very good with the whole this actor looks like type of thing. All right. So you, I know you're the one that wanted to know who he was. So, so ask away, yeah, ask your questions. I wanted to know. Who you are. Well, I'm very excited because now I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. So believe it or not, your frozen products are difficult to come by. Um, I'm working with a store right now that is doing a lot better. Believe it or not, they just started carrying the um, Golden Blend. So that's what the dogs are on now. And um, and also they just started carrying your your raw goat's milk. So for the longest time, all I ever saw was the broth and the um, just greens. But I did talk to them. And and well, I have to confess, I do confessions periodically on the podcast. I did tell them that I was going to be interviewing you. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate you getting more of our products into the stores. If so you ever have troubles, you know, I can help products. I can help you uh, you know, with that because Every store should be able to be able to order it for the most part in all parts of the country um, if they don't have it. But yeah, every they were very hesitant at first to just order it on a regular basis. And yeah. so a lot of times, like I did walk in and had a Kimberly moment. And I say that because I walked in and there was a lady asking and she said, there's one in the freezer. And the lady said, yes, I know, but we're holding that for a customer that comes in. And then, you know, I sashayed up to the register and she said, Kathy, your stuff is in the freezer. And I was like, thank you. So that was my <laughs> moment. But um, they are starting to pick up more and more. And I'm looking at some things on your site that I want to talk to them about the bone broth and stuff like that and some of your bites. So I'm really a huge fan only because I have two golden doodles, Billy, that are um, almost 14 and eight. And they been on a pretty restricted diet, not for um, medical reasons as much as just health. So I try to give them as clean a diet as I can. I am a raw feeder adjacent. 
Okay, that's I've given myself that name. At some point, I'm gonna make some shirts, but um, <laughs> I don't. That would be great. <laughs> I don't do raw, but I do what I believe is the closest to it, and then I augment with fresh vegetables, green juju, and I try to stay away from commercial treats. And that's pretty much how they have existed most of their life. I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. So finding this um, and finding your just greens, which I don't know if that was the first product that you started with or not. It is, um, it has satisfied the um, other components to their diet. They're, tip, they're technically, they eat a 98% protein um, diet. They're on Ziwi Peak, the air dehydrated beak. So it's just nothing but, you know, meat, muscles, organs, bones, and that just air dehydrated. So I wanted them to have vegetables and other components into their diet. And I didn't, um, I, I couldn't cook greens. Um, not like Kimberly and certainly not like you. So that's where the Just Greens came in at. But I just wanted you to talk about some of the um, some of the products that I'm seeing here that I did not know anything um, about uh, because I'm very intrigued with the different types of components that you put together with these various um packages like yeah the, like putting the beets in the golden blend well the beets are separate than the golden blend well no there's beets are in the golden blend oh yeah, really we, uh golden yeah. beets oh yep, golden beets yep, yeah yep so you're both right kind of um <laughs> i try to walk i try to walk that fence i'm just gonna compliment you both equally. <laughs> that's good. totally fine um no yeah we do you know I, first thing I'll say is I, I, I really just, I joined Green Juju, not quite two, it'll be two years in June. And we've put out a lot of products since then. But, you know, before I was there, Kelly Marion, who is the owner of the company, it's really just, there's three of us because Kelly hired a personal assistant. So there is, you know, and so when I joined, she had already done so many great things in terms of, you know, doing Just Greens and doing the Bailey's Blend and doing the treat, you know, the treat line and, and doing all these products that I really just wanted to bring what I could bring to her company and her vision. So that was really my first goal there was to say, you know, I don't want to recreate anything I've really done before. I want to, you know, I really love what she's doing and how do I, you know, get involved with that and do that. And so uh, we've, we've really hit the ground running and put out like a bunch of products in that time. And I feel like, you know, a lot of the products that we've come out with now are really a good representation of both her and me and coming to the forefront of that. And she is just a really great person to work with in that regard. And what I mean by that is, um, and sorry, I'm sick. If my voice sounds even extra nasally, uh, <laughs> I, normally I have a nasally voice, but here I am. So, um, I, when you have a kid this young, it's just, you're always sick a hundred percent of the time I feel like, but, um, so, uh, I totally just lost my, oh yeah. So um, that process is really fun. And it's really my favorite part of the job is, you know, from thinking about what you want to do all the way to, you know, r and d it at a very small level to how do we produce this in a larger way to, you know, getting the product out there so people can try it up to packaging and that part of it. And then what are we going to do for the release? What are we going to do for the marketing? That's really what drives me. and. I will also say this, if you think that we've, you know, I think we've done some really cool stuff in the past year and a half, but if you think that's really cool, just wait until we get next year. Uh, we, we're already, you know, in the thick of working on new things and, and exciting things, which um, are exciting. That's a great sentence. They're exciting <laughs> things that are exciting. So, you know, and at the very heart of our business is those blends you're talking about, is the Just Greens, is the Bailey's Blend, is the... Um, is the uh, golden blend. And one of the reasons it's the heart of the business, and, and I think this is really, really exciting as well, is um, I was at AHVMA, which is Holistic Veterinary Conference, and 
Um, there's a company called Ano Animal Biome, and they um, they do they they do microbiome testing and diversity testing, and and they sort of measure different factors um, with your gut biome and and bacteria. And basically, what they're finding is that raw dogs, raw fed dogs, don't really have a diverse enough gut, and it's because not only do they not have a very diverse diet, but they also especially don't have a very diverse diet when it comes to plants. Um, so they're not getting all these different types of fiber. They're not getting all these, you know, different types of uh, bacteria and just general microflora. And that's really where those come in. And so it doesn't matter if you're a kibble fed dog, doesn't matter if you're a raw adjacent fed dog, doesn't matter if you're, I'm going to use that now a hundred okay, times. Hashtag that, so, up, man. hashtag that up. Doesn't matter if you're a raw fed dog, getting more of those uh, you know, especially low carb plants into your diet on a regular basis into your dog's diet. Or, you know, if you rotate between all of our products, all three of our blends, that's 17 different vegetables that you can get into your dog's diet. And I think that's an easy way to do that. You know, it's obviously what I do, you know, for my dog and building that out and all of a lot, you know, when it comes to those, or when it comes to our fermented products or our bone broth, they're all really low in calories. And so you, it's really hard to unbalance a diet when you're talking about adding vegetables, when you're talking about adding fermented vegetables. Um, and I know that's one of Kimberly's favorite uh, topics, balancing diets and, and <laughs> that kind of stuff. So, you know, hey. it's, <laughs> it's uh, which is a funny topic because, you know, I, I, it's really interesting because I've, I've sort of come full circle back to, I've worked in diet formulation for like 10 years, over 10 years. And, you know, what is, what is, you know, this is going to be a side tangent, but what <laughs> is, complete, Kimberly's used to this. So, you know, what is complete and balanced? What is AFCO complete and balanced? What is NRC complete and balanced? And it's VDF. funny. What's up? VDF complete yeah, and so, balanced. So, I mean, it's like, we can do those things and those, and, and I know that that's a certain mindset and products that, that obtain that that's great. And you need to know, does this have everything my dog needs? But I've really come to a point where I'm like, no one food has everything your dog needs. We need to, you know, move to variety and, uh, you know, but I, right now for my complete and balanced portion of my dog's meal is whole animals. And I, I've really gone back to nature knowing that about that. And yes, I tell people like, Oh, just wing it. It's totally fine. And, and at the same time have like multiple spreadsheets for my dog's <laughs> diet that I update <laughs> like maybe every day. Well, for um, me, you know, the vet was saying, throw in some green beans. And I remember telling Kimberly, I was like, you know, I throw these little green beans in the dish, but like, like how long is this going to be enticing and exciting? And so from there I went to broccoli, cauliflower and carrots and then um whoo what an emulsifier so i can like make my own mash and then i was hot stuff i was raw food adjacent <laughs> broth, veggie broth and um so then she kind of like she told me about you and i started with the just greens so now i'm doing exactly what you just said about the 17 different vegetables um or plant-based foods i just went and got the greens the blend and and the baileys um, so that I could um, augment it. So they get this on their, in their evening meal. Well, and, and so you're not technically raw adjacent because you're feeding raw veggies. So you are a raw feeder just in a, in a, a sort of different sense. Um, I disagree. <laughs> that's <laughs> this ain't that's fine. You. This is the Billy Kathy show. <laughs> we gave well, you your props in the beginning. Hush up now. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this though. Let me from a from a from a from a nutrition. This is for a question for Kimberly. For a nutrition philosophical point of view here, let me ask you this: If she feeds technically not raw or air dried meat and raw vegetables, right? I feed mostly raw foods, but then some cooked foods. If if we're cooking, or I might do a a tin of uh, sardines. Um, isn't that sort of the same? premise that we're both doing because we're both technically feeding both cooked and raw foods it's so, a spectrum okay oh i see okay so <laughs> i will i want to say one other thing to make myself look like a huge nerd so 
Uh, so <laughs> I was. The I only thing to... I hear is I disagree, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> You're I, wrong, I, and I'm going to explain so, why. <laughs> so, so I was. I got up this morning, and I was telling this story to Emily, um, I my wife, and I was like. I was like, oh man, I was wanting to do this diet thing. I, I really, I was like, I, I wanted to save this for Monday, but I was too excited to like reverse engineer this <laughs> diet. So I could like basically look at the numbers from their GAs and, and get some, some data points or whatever. And I was like, I was too exciting to do it. I couldn't wait for the fun or whatever. And she just looked at me blankly. She was like, that is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like Emily a lot. You you've had three Emily stories now, and I I like her. A lot. I do too. Uh, just, I think I'm just gonna put it out there. I think I think the best uh, Emily story is I was in the kitchen with her, and she looks at me and she goes, "I'm gonna need you to start doing things that make sense," and then just walks out. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Uh-oh. Emily story is when we were at a party and Billy was just randomly going up to people and tell, pointing at me and saying, guess how old she is. And Emily had this horrified look on her face. Like he was just trolling me and he was like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. And she was just like, no, I'm not going to guess. I was like, oh, poor Emily. But, and I was doing that because you look young. I want to say that for the record. So I don't sound like a horrible person. Um, way to ruin it so you know <laughs> but, way to ruin it no, <laughs> she, look here then i have to come in with my commentary that was back then <laughs> back in 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 2000 and the 17 that might have been 2018 that, i think that was 2018 oh okay because, yeah. <laughs> so only four years ago and there she goes. So let's let's get back because I have a friend in Billy. I have you, you know your camera went away. We can see your dogs though. Kimberly, I, I told you that <laughs> if I move the camera, I have to wipe my oh, nose. Oh, I forgot. I yeah. Put it all out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, the two of you together. Well, yes, Billy. I'm sick too. So it's okay. Oh. I usually don't sound like Eartha Kitt. This is not my <laughs> normal. Um, I'm 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 a little higher up, more like Felicia Rashad from the Cosby Show. Well, well I I have a question. Um, can you explain, Billy, the difference between um the Jess Greens and the Bailey's Blend? Yeah, so I mean, basically, you're looking at achieving the same premise or goal with two different sort of, you know let's say antioxidant types. So if you're looking for, you know, the liver detoxifying effects of um, dandelion greens, or you're looking for the really high vitamin, vitamin precursor uh, aspects, like say K1 and beta carotene and, and, you know, precursor to vitamin A and and kale, you know, just greens is a great way to do that and and to offer those fiber profile types. And, and, um, but, on ba- on the Bailey's blend side of things, if you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking for the sulfur compounds that are in broccoli, say to for anti can for their anti cancer effects, or you're looking for you know cabbage, which is very high in an obscure thing called vitamin U, which is great mm. for digestive lining and for healing ulcers. If you're looking for you know um, that sort of thing, so it's really about harnessing the power of sort of nature and not, you know, it's the opposite of doing a, a vitamin and mineral supplement that's made up of synthetic vitamins. It's, it's presenting the body with all of those whole foods. And really there is no, besides raw milk, which really for me is the only kind of silver bullet food there, you know, in terms of nutrients and, and, you know, feeding one thing, there really is no set path to like, I'm just going to do just greens and that will meet my vegetable requirement because we just know that, you know, diversity is better there. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, and we're actually potentially working on a study with that, which would be really, really exciting to figure some of those things out. I think it is at some level, it's kind of funny that we have to do a study to 
to know what we all know that fresh food is better yeah. um, to be able to do that. But then the yeah. Bailey's blend is also the only really self-fermenting uh, product on the market. Mm -hmm. Kelly, you know, I like to say Kelly was so brilliant. She created a fermented product without even knowing it. <laughs> um, so, you know, cabbage is the second ingredient and uh, lemon is the last ingredient and cabbage is a really good inoculator and lemon's a really good acidifier. So the product ferments itself, which is really cool. So if it's in the fridge on an average of eight days, it will be fermented. And then you get a whole different sort of, you get an additional uh, nutrition profile there. And it just took, I was dorky enough to have been using it for 10 days and was like, oh, this smells like acetic acid. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, it started testing the pH and then got out a bunch of containers and did, that's like, I just did that for fun. So that's like, you know, part of it and then figured out like, okay, what is the average time this is taking to ferment? And so you, that was kind of cool. Cause that was like a month after I started working at green juju. So it's kind of like a nice, you know, uh, marriage of ideas there. Mm -hmm. Um, well, here's a question though, that just popped into my head. So what is the refrigeration like then? for these or it doesn't matter because of the fermentation so the just greens is like and the golden blend is like a week and uh bailey's blend is 22 days okay because of the fermentation and our fermented blends uh the lewis gold uh lewis fermented golden paste and bam speeds is 30 days and then our goat's milk is two weeks and then 30 days if you choose to ferment it at home which is um so kimberly's um nephew doodle harley he's 14 <laughs> he is um he's actually a reincarnated human that i did something terrible to in another life <laughs> i've come to that conclusion <laughs> because everything about him is different so with the milk that's a morning um add to their food for breakfast but harley is taken to eating his food first and then having the milk as a crumb chaser so it's like, I cannot mix the, I can pour milk over Jackson's food and he's going to eat it. But Harley has to eat his food, leave those little niblets of crumbs in there, then look at me and give the head nod. And I stupidly come behind him <laughs> and add the milk. And he's just like happy as I don't know what. So they're on two different lines. But I buy the small bottles of milk because it only lasts about seven or eight days based on them just getting it once a day. Sure. Um, but I, that's my go-to um, whenever I'm in a very high environmental allergen um, in, um, area. So that's what I battle every single day almost. Can to stay away from um, conventional veterinary science and do holistic as much as I can. But sometimes during various seasons, I can't because it is just that bad. So I try to harass Kimberly as much as I can um, with giving me great innovative ways to continue to strengthen the gut, you know, and protect that, that intestinal area. So what is nettles? Because mm -hmm. you're using, like, I'm looking at these things that I haven't seen before, and I don't know what a nettle is. And I always ask those questions that people like because I'm not afraid to say, I don't know what a nettle is. I can look it up, but what is it? Why are you using it? And what's its benefit? Yeah, that was that was such an interesting way to ask that question because you like <laughs> led up to it with the milk and then you're just like, what is a nettle? So that totally threw me off guard. That was amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, you um, know, our, our, Zoom, <laughs> our Zoom account is only good for 42 minutes, man. We got to keep it moving. No, that's okay. Cause, uh, I have a life, uh, uh, maple is napping. So this is like my window as well. Um, so nettles, uh, the, the, first of all, the reason the nettles are in there, nettles are a plant mm -hmm. and they're found, uh, definitely in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not sure exactly if they're prevalent in other places as well, but I do know that they're prevalent in the Pacific Northwest and they, Wanting to include nettles in there comes from when, when Green Juju was a tiny company. I mean, we're still not on the big side, but when they were even when we were even tinier, Kelly used to actually go and handpick all the nettles to put into a specific seasonal blend she did, which was a nettle blend. Wow. And basically, 
Nettles is a plant and there's obviously a lot of medicinal value in terms of antioxidants and things like that. But really the, the reason we put it in there is because it acts as a natural antihistamine. And she would see so many different, she would basically have people be buying the nettle blend like a year's worth and feeding it all the time because she would see such a great result with itching. Um, so when we went to do the freeze dried variety of that, we wanted to get that in there as, as kind of a, a nice added bonus. Um, there are some other differences as well in the freeze dried uh, version of it. Um, and we are looking to potentially maybe go into, you know, a different, some more uh, freeze dried versions of, of some of the, some things like that. But um, I think that the nettles really makes it stand out. And I think um, so, and I think it's a true, it's kind of a callback to, to, you know, the Pacific Northwest and, and mm -hmm. where we are and where we started. We kind of have a East Coast, West Coast thing going on now with three of our products being produced in Pennsylvania and most of them still being produced in, in uh, Salem, Oregon. But um, we're, uh, it's always nice to be able to, I, so I, I, I kind of like, you know, take a really long time to answer each question. And then there's like, <laughs> and then basically I just move on to something else. So hopefully you don't mind that. Cause I was going to be like, and I get to come to Seattle a lot because um, <laughs> we're based in Ballard in Seattle, which is always exciting for me because that's where I love to eat and drink coffee and hang out with Kimberly. So Yay. now see, you just <laughs> you it from one subject to the next yourself. So it's, we can follow this this type of I have, I have a friend that has tons of nettles on her property. And so um, I'm going when they start growing in the spring to harvest them. And hopefully by then I'll have my freeze dryer because I'm going to freeze dry my own nettles. Well, you know, interesting that I did kind of take a sneak peek and look at it before we got started. And um, they say people with eczema and arthritis and muscle and joint pain use the nettle in a tea form and mm -hmm. drink it um but i was just curious and i'm also looking at now this is a product i haven't seen the paste the the golden paste and the yep. and the beets well that was the one we were talking about that i was like there's no beets in the golden paste but there's golden beets in the golden paste no but there's bam beets yeah and i have the bam beets i have, actually have them both oh okay and I alternate them in my dog's diet from here to there. Okay. I, um, I put them, I, tr I put them into um, a little tiny, you know, the garlic jars where you get the minced garlic. Yes. Cause I save all my glass jars and that garlic jar is almost big enough to fit an entire container of the product. And how much do you give them? No, I, I just do a little, a, a little spoonful. Oh. Mm. Enjoy. They're pretty concentrated. So um, Bam's Beats is named after uh, Bambi, who is Kelly's 12-year-old French bulldog. And uh, Lua's Golden Paste is named after Lua, who is my dog who passed away a little over a year ago. Uh, so it's uh, not this last August, but the August before. And, uh, you know, that was a really cool project for both of us. That was the Golden yeah. Paste was one of the first things that I said to Kelly, when we were talking about working together and, you know, her, and that was basically like, here's a great idea. And if you want to hire me, that would be awesome. And, <laughs> and she wanted to, so that was great. Um, yeah. But it's really cool because those are the perfect pairing with the, the blends. So I went through the blends and I said, you know, you get all these different fiber profile types that are going to feed the microbiome and going to feed those bacteria. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way to inoculate with bacteria. So we do something really cool called a wild ferment, which is like, I think really the next uh, step in probiotics and how we look at probiotics. So what that means is all we're doing is uh, adding sea salt to reduce the pH. And so all the probiotics come from either the beets in the purple cabbage in the in mm -hmm. Bam's beets or the turmeric in the golden paste. So every time you use a different pouch, you're going to get a different bacteria set, essentially in differing amounts. Oh, nice. And they're all going to be soil based. And so it's, and you're going to get all those healthy yeasts and, and good bacteria uh, in that ferment. And so for me, that's just, I think a really cool concept that you can kind of feed it and get, a, you know, different bacteria subsets. Um, and the other really cool thing is, you know, like in the beets and the, 
uh, purple cabbage, the bacteria is eating all the sugars. So you get all the health benefits, but none of the sugar. And in the golden paste, it does something really, really cool, which is not only does it eat the sugars, uh, but in process out the starches so you can keep it a raw food state. But it also, they start to eat or process the curcumin, which is the active ingredient and turn it into metabolites, which means that it's easier. Basically, when it's in metabolite form, that's the form your body uses to basically for it to get into the bloodstream and actually do what it's going to do in terms of, you know, it's anti-inflammatory effects and antioxidant mm-hmm. effects. So it takes away this much like fermentation does with a lot of stuff. It takes away that digestive step. So if your dog was okay. to just eat turmeric, they would have to turn it into metabolite form wherein, you know, so that was a really cool uh, thing that we, we got to work with. Um, and I will say it was an interesting thing because like where we teach people to do milk fermentation, which is really easy. Um, the turmeric one was actually a lot harder because it was, um, there's not a lot of residual sugar there. So we definitely in the R and D process had some failures and some mold overs and that kind of thing beforehand, but we figured it out and, you know, it was, it was definitely a really cool collaborative process. And I think we're going to do, you know, I, I think we strike a really good balance between understandable things, but then also like weird things as well uh, that kind of push the envelope. And that's kind of where I want to be. And that's one of the reasons I joined Green Juju was to make, still make really, really interesting stuff, but make that stuff really accessible. So, you know, if we're going to do X, how do we do something that no one's really done before? Mm-hmm. And how do we, how do we make it where someone like we're sold at retail stores. And so you have stores that educate really, really well, but then you also have stores where you're just on the shelf. And so how do you make products that are innovative and interesting, but also are someone could just see that in a freezer or on the shelf and pick it up and go, Oh, this, this is cool. And I think a lot of that too has to do with, you know, realizing that packaging and, you know, how beautiful packaging is and stuff really does play into people's minds. And I don't have a lot to do with that, but boy, does I think our packaging looks amazing. So, yeah. uh, well, you know, from an aesthetic. Well, that's what made me, when I grabbed the Just Greens, after I sashayed in with my intro, the <laughs> products back there were for me. It was the packaging of the Golden Blend that I had not seen. And it just literally um, jumped out, which is a good thing because it was packed with some of your competitors. and. Um, it's what made me hold it and want to read it and then make the decision right then and there to purchase it. So, yeah. but you're right. People have to understand and know the, um, all of the benefits. And that's why, well, it was the second reason why I wanted you on the podcast. The first was just to meet you and find out that you were real. But um, I, I also wanted to make sure that um, we could share a lot of what you've just told us with the people that listen to us. Because yeah. Kimberly and I, I don't know if she told you, but this is something that we've been doing since 2012, just literally talking at least once a week um, about, you know, being girls raising dogs. And, uh, you know, after COVID hit and we were making that that shift like everybody else was, we thought people may be interested in our banter. And surprisingly, (laughs) week after week, we're finding that people are interested in our banter. But one of the consistent comments we always get back, Billy, is that when they listen to us, it's really like being in a room with us, like just girls hanging out and talking because we're able to share these things that either she knew, I knew, we knew. um, And in a case like this, just bringing you on board where you would be able to um, just kind of educate me, reinforce the information that Kimberly already knows, and tell all these people about Green Juju, because I don't think that many people in my neck of the woods are that aware of it. So I'm very, very grateful. But well, before we let you go, and before you say anything, Billy, I want to back up and talk about like, what are the benefits? Cause I know the benefits of the golden paste. I know the benefits of feeding, you know, fermented beets, 
but why did you guys decide to bring those products to the market and why should people consider adding those to their dog's diet? Well, I, I, I do want to say, I definitely feel like one of the girls. So thank you for that. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's, a, you know, I'm here to, here to gab and et cetera. So, um, so it fermented. Yeah. So the, the first part is the, the bacteria that I was talking about is probiotics just in general. So we want to diversify as much of the gut bacteria as possible. So, you know, mammals have like 400 different species of probiotics in their gut. And so, <clears throat> You know, if for instance, you fed our fermented vegetables and our goat's milk, that would be several hundred different types of uh, probiotics that you're inoculating your, your dog or cat's gut with every single day. Um, so the first part is the probiotics, but also I think it goes to more of like a, almost like a philosophical level in that sense where um, you're kind of bringing the outdoors in. So most of our dogs live inside most of the time. I mean, I live in a city. And I walk the dog, his primary exercise is he walks up to the co-working space I work at and he's amazing. He sits in a chair next to me and he's kind of like, you know, everyone's <laughs> favorite mascot there, but um, he's not out in the woods very often. He's not out in, in his environment. So how do we bring all those microbes that they would normally get from being in the woods and, you know, being on a farm and doing all these things that dogs do? I think, I think this really helps to bring all those soil-based microbes into the house, you know, in a really, really positive way. But also both of those things are going to be really, have really sort of dark, rich antioxidant colors. Um, you know, whether it's the beets be detoxifying your liver or the, you know, the, the antioxidants and the purple cabbage. Um, and then when you ferment things, you essentially uh, pre-process the, out, you know, your, the bacteria eating them and those bacteria produce extra enzymes and extra vitamins and extra organic acids that, you know, do things like help your blood sugar, you know, stabilize or not rise too quickly. Um, and there's just so much you can do there. I did a um, side note. I did a, a live with Dr. Judy Morgan's um, daughter recently about, you know, fermenting uh, berries with kombucha. There's just a lot of stuff you can do in that realm to sort of like mm -hmm. diversify, uh, you know, healthy yeast and, and bacteria. Um, and then the golden paste is just, I think it's really applicable to everything that involves inflammation. And mm -hmm. that's, that's really both things. That's, you know, that's cancer, that's liver disease, that's kidney disease, that's, Arthritis. you know, yeah, it's getting older, it's senior mm -hmm. animals, it's, it's allergies is inflammation. Yeah. And, and so, you know, even I have a one-year-old dog and, and I, I do the same thing as you, Kimberly, I kind of either do one in the morning and one at night or rotate between them, you know, uh, after I use one up with the golden paste and, and Bam's beets. So I'm trying to prepare his, I'm trying to, you know, it's the same reason I add a lot of moisture to Huckleberry's diet because I'm trying to, you know, spare his kidneys later in life and, and do those sorts of things. So I think it really, both of those things can fit in almost every dog's diet. But if you had to choose one, I would say, if you're trying to focus on a particular health problem, the golden pace is probably where you're going to uh, see the most value. But if you have a dog that you're just trying to look for, you know, general support, I would say uh, the BAM Beats is a really great everyday supplement for, you know, getting all that bacteria, all those extra vitamins and minerals. And if you're using our blends, what a, what a cool way to, you know, plop down some just greens and then put some BAMS beets on top of that and inoculate it out and, and yeah. do that. So, you know, you mentioned something a few minutes ago that we've talked about Kimberly before, and, you know, we're always talking about puppies and then um, senior dogs and, you know, how to care for them in their twilight years, but not so much do I often hear about preventative um, and, and just preparing your teenage dog, if you will, your adolescent dog, you know, to strengthen those areas that will help possibly have a longer lifespan, you know? That's exactly right. I mean, I will tell you right now, Huckleberry is, is becoming and will be my daughter's best friend. And so I need to have him be as healthy as possible for as long as possible. And so, uh, 
it's something that, you know, I take from a, just a purely, you know, even if I, you know, didn't have a dog, like just the purely academic side of things, I would be really into nutrition, but like to be able to apply it to something that means so much to people. And mm -hmm. it's just like you, you know, it's just like human nutrition. You have to start the stuff now and then try to avoid some of the croton uh, crotonic. Wow. That's a, that's a crazy <laughs> word that I just made up. <laughs> some of the, I, I don't know. I, I have a, I have a crazy brain fog or something. But I'm glad you admitted you just made it up. Cause I was about to Google it. Yeah. Some of these, uh, you know, uh, some of these disease conditions that you see in humans, you know, that are there, or, or for instance, with dogs, it's like, uh, you know, more than one in two dogs now gets cancer. So obviously we're doing something wrong and we need to move in a, in a, in a different direction. So that's kind of where we, where I look at, you know, the pre preventative side of things that I definitely feed Huckleberry much different than Lua, uh, you know, as a senior, um, but it's really the same concepts. Um, and I, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, rub it in Kimberly's face that I was able to buy. You know, shut up, Billy. <laughs> four gallon, four gallons of raw, raw goat colostrum, uh, raw goat colostrum for fifty dollars. So I have a friend, and yeah, and I hear you gave one to Aaron. So, yep. yeah, and I have a friend who lives in New Jersey, John. He. Um, was excitedly telling me the other day about I think two gallons that he got um and I'm just like it's, it's falling from the skies over there well it's technically green juju um colostrum because it comes from one of our farms obviously that um <laughs> so he was uh but I if if I didn't have to check a bag I would bring you some maybe um, I'll surprise you who knows maybe maybe I'll embarrass myself at a quiet restaurant, excitedly squealing about my colostrum. Well, that'll be the end of that meal. <laughs> um, and I will say this too, I actually fermented it into a raw kefir. So that's like the ultimate superfood. Wow. Look at you, overachiever. <laughs> no. One of those yeah, things. Just, Always got to be a one-upper. makes him Billy. I do what I can. <laughs> Well, Billy, thank you so much for coming on with us. It's nice to be able to show Kathy that you are a real person and I'm not just throwing out, <laughs> I'm not name dropping randomly for no reason. You have, you have helped her redeem herself, but more importantly, um, this has been a very special podcast episode for me because I really, really like the product a lot. Billy, I just want to tell you that I'm very, very happy to have met you. This is going to be a favorite podcast of mine for a very long time. If not, you know, on the shelves forever. I've always been interested in the people behind Green Juju because it's made such a difference in terms of how I'm able to add clean, uh, get ready, Kim, raw, <laughs> adjacent um, raw foods to help me Billy, um to my dog's diet um I continue to learn so much from um people like you and I appreciate it and I hope that other people who are listening are going to um go on your website we'll add the link um and learn more about this product because you all are doing some amazing things and I'll go ahead and watch Kimberly's smile get bigger because as always, <laughs> if it wasn't for her, I would have never met you. And I would about that's reasons. just adorable. Well, I appreciate that. We we, you know, we're a small team that works really hard. So it, and that's I, that's the beauty behind it. So don't ever change that. I mean, grow, get big. But um that's it's not too beautiful. big. <laughs> She's like, just work all the time. It's great. Yeah, um, exactly. So. Exactly. No, and I will say this. I can't wait to name drop you two now. I'm going to walk into every pet store I know and be like, do you know Kimberly and Kathy? Because I do. <laughs> Very excited. Well, when I get finished designing my raw food adjacent t-shirts, <laughs> I'll make sure um, to send you one. Please do. I would love that. There's a bunch of so. us out here now. Exactly. Yeah, I bet. I well, hear thank you every guys day. very much. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, Billy. And um, I'll see you on Monday. 
Sounds like a plan. Oh, just had to throw that in there. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I love you both too. All right. See you later. (laughs) Bye, Bye. Billy. Hey guys, it's Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging. Thank you so much for listening to Girls with Dogs. We so appreciate all of you guys who take time out of your day to listen to our podcast and listen to us banter about our dogs. But this is a mini break so that I can talk to you guys about this week's sponsor, Lifeline Pet Products. I've been telling you about their fish oil for several weeks now. I love them. It's the only fish oil I use with my dogs. I still add fish to their diet, but in my research and in my experience with my dogs, I found that they get more omega-3 fatty acids in a spoonful of fish oil than they would like in a can of, of sardines. So I really think that fish oil is an important part of our dog's diet. But that's not the only thing that Lifeline produces. They also have this amazing kelp. And I add this to the diet as well. A lot of people understand that kelp is a great source of iodine, which supports thyroid health. What people may not understand is that kelp is really good for dogs with allergies because not only does it support skin and coat health, but it's a natural anti-inflammatory. So I give this to my dog, Rodrigo, in the spring and in the fall. I mean, he gets a little bit all year long, but the spring and fall is when his environmental allergies really flare up. And this is going to give him the support that he needs. So if you are looking for something to add to the mix, something that's a whole food, healthy supplement, something that's organic and that you can trust, check out Lifeline Pet Products, their organic kelp, and definitely pick up some of their fish oil too. So back to the episode. Thanks for watching guys. Yay. Well, well this episode was brought to you by I know. Vix Vapor Rub. <laughs> So that was great. It was great. I'm gl- I'm glad that we were able to get Billy on. We're gonna have to get more people on because that was oh, a lot man. of fun. I do. I did enjoy him. Um, gosh, I just wish I was feeling healthier because there's so many more things that probably would have come through my very cloudy, congested brain. But um, so freeze dried just greens, the mm-hmm. the blend with the nettles. You purchased that as opposed to the the frozen because yeah. of its shelf life. Yeah, this is sh- shelf stable. I mean, I do I transfer do. it from the bag into a glass jar, but I just do that for everything and I store it. And it's so just how nice do you to be- it? How do I, oh, I just add with the um, just greens, I just take a spoonful and either mix because their their food is wet. Okay. So I just mix it into their food. If I were feeding something that was dry, I would hydrate the d- just greens. Now I may get those um, as a backup if I didn't have the wet, mm-hmm. because I could add that to, let's say, the broccoli because mm-hmm. it's not in there. You yeah. know. Yeah. And, and- I mean, I- when I'm Originally, asking, that's I'm why I got it was as a backup. It's also something yeah. you can travel with and it's it's really nice to have. But um, lately I've been trying to um, like dehydrate a lot of things. And if uh, we're able to um, add a freeze dryer to the um, rotation, then I'll start freeze drying things. Like, you know, my friend's property, I can get a bunch of nettles. We used to have nettles on our property, but Johan cleared them out but I'm going to go up to a friend's property and get nettles. Um, you know, in the spring, I'll start digging up the dandelion greens and the roots. And, and, and I'm, I'm going st- to, I, I do, I, I get all that. Okay, but so when- you bring, you bring, you be the friend and I'll be Kimberly. Okay. <laughs> ring, ring. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Can I come over? I want to get some nettles. She invited me over <laughs> to get nettles. It's not like I just looked at her yard and, you know, looked over a fence and was like, oh, I'm coming here. I want and to get they some have a, nettles. They have a ton of nettles and, and you know, and they, they usually pick some of them, but they were like, yeah, Kimberly, if you ever want to come, you come and get them. And so then we have five acres of dandelions in the spring. So I don't have any problem finding those, but yeah. um, I've been dehydrating everything at, you know, at a low temperature for about six, seven hours to, you know, and then grinding it up in a Nutribullet to make it into a powder. Gotcha. But um, I'm just not able to source all the stuff that they're able to get for green juju. 
and okay you know and and i i think that i was reading up on like the difference between freeze drying and dehydrating and freeze drying you retain 90 percent of the nutrients whereas mm -hmm. with dehydrating i think you um retain 60 65 percent of the nutrients so um well, this I think is i'm gonna this, um i'm gonna is, order some of the golden paste well i'll probably get the paste and the beets yeah but i like the golden paste i was being um I was being honest when, <coughs> excuse me, when Scout and Zoe, and I'm using those names correctly, when Scout and Zoe and Harley were younger, mm -hmm. we were not hearing anything about preventative nope. nutritional care for our dogs mm -hmm. as they get into the senior spectrum. Yeah, it's and a really different way to think and it, and it makes sense that you know instead of waiting until something is broken maybe if start... i did not have harley mm -hmm. with his you know st senior struggles that he does have and they're not by any means as as much as some other people god bless them you know are going through but yeah. i would not even be thinking about preventative stuff for Jax. Mm -hmm. yeah and the same thing with you Mm -hmm. you oh, would, absolutely. You because of my experience at Apollo and Rodrigo and stuff, not anywhere near that. Yeah. Well, be, if it weren't for my experience with Scout, I wouldn't have changed everything with Zoe and Rodrigo and Apollo. And I honestly think the reason why Rodrigo at 12 and a half is still doing so well. Mm -hmm. And he, people, people think that, you know, even his veterinarians say that he looks like an eight-year-old dog, not a 12 and a half year old dog. And, um, and I think the reason why is because I spent so much time focusing on his gut health. So he did get the benefits of fermented foods and all of these things, all of his life and not as a preventative, but it was because I was constantly chasing his gut issues, mm -hmm, not, mm -hmm. not realizing that I was also laying a foundation for a healthier senior lifestyle. And so, you know, now, um, I actually, you know, after Scout, you know, um, Apollo at, you know, he's, he'll be four in January. He gets fermented foods. He gets stuff for gut health. He gets a joint supplement. You know, he's an active, healthy dog. And technically he doesn't appear to need any of that, but I'm not doing it for him now. I'm doing it to support, you know, Precisely. stuff down the line. Precisely. You know? So but uh, um, just as a mention too, I mean, off topic, still giving Rodrigo you move, he's still doing really good on it. Well, good as an off topic, because I had a conversation with Dr. Craig and Dr. Johnson, and I explained to them that I was out of you move and that I needed to purchase some more. So I said to him, this is very interesting, and we can like dive into this at a later date because we need mm -hmm. to do some more research. I said to him, I sent your wife an email wanting to know the one that I had from them. I remember I told you it was like 80 some mm -hmm. bucks. Yeah. I said, that one I cannot find online. And he said, you won't because it is a veterinarian medicine. Oh, okay. And I said, but there's six or seven different versions. And he said, yes, and you must be careful because he says, I don't know who they are or anything like that. So I'm going to copy this. I'm curious. I'm going to Photoshop, Photoshop. I'm going to copy this and send it to you. Or I guess okay. I can scan it. I want you to look at the one that you bought and mm -hmm. just do a deep Kimberly dive in ingredients and all of that, because you purchased something mm -hmm. um, on the internet. But I'm thinking, why would a veterinarian come up come up with something but then there's these I don't want to call them knockoffs because I don't know that yet but why are there other versions that are less expensive but now I have a vet telling me it's not the same thing mm. and yeah yeah because yeah. this I'm on the you move website the official joint supplement of the American Kennel Club <clears throat> so yeah I'm I am and see, mine doesn't say a thing about the American Kennel Club. So this is this is interesting. Yeah. We're we're gonna 
we're going to come back to this because you and I are both going to do some research. Yeah, that, yeah, I, I would I very much like to know. Him. Yeah, I saw him right before I, I fell apart physically. <laughs> so I, I have been, this is the first really day that I've been sitting up. Um, but I'm going to send him the links because he says, I want to know what you're talking about. Yeah. And so okay. I said, okay, and, and do a deep dive. But regardless to that, Kimberly, mm -hmm. I still think that the improvement you're seeing in your dog is real because yeah. of the combination of what it is that they're talking about. And who knows, Dr. Johnson, love you to death, Paul. He might not know that what's out there is still the same thing, just doesn't have the same words on it. I actually think it is the same thing. I just think that there is a veterinarian strength because I just, I'm now looking on the U Move Advanced 360. That's what this is. Yeah. And so that it looks, you know, and, and there isn't anything on here like buy here. So it looks like I can't buy this online. I have to get it from a veterinarian. So I huh. think that there's, I think that there's just different levels of it. A different strengths. Mm -hmm, exactly. So I got, cause there is an extra strength joint supplement for active and senior dogs. That is $33 of container. I can't, I think it's 120 tablets in it. And then the one that I got, it's $49 for a container. I don't know how many tablets are in it, but this is, let me see, 120 tablets and it's for senior dogs. I got 70 for 80 bucks. And I thought that was odd. Why 70? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Why 70? And the dosage. So are you doing one pill twice a day? No, I'm actually giving Rodrigo three pills a day right now. Holy Hannah. Okay. Yeah. Because he was, he was, before I started him on it, his back legs were so weak <clears throat> and he was having some serious issues. So I decided to start high for okay. a couple months to help build that strength and um mm -hmm. maybe in january i'll go back to two but if he's still doing well on three i might just keep it at three but i set up a recurring shipment with them okay okay good mm -hmm. i um yeah i'm huge fan yeah huge fan so um so that's good all right. All right. Well, I'm fading now, friend. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you feel better. Take care of yourself. I hope I feel better too. Say I'm spending the rest of the day painting our family room. Really? Yeah. We went this morning and got paint. So I'll be painting our family room today. What is the color? Well, one wall right now is called gray cloth and it's a light gray. And the other wall is going to be two shades darker. So a gray color that's two shades darker. I don't remember the name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So, and then we're ultimately it's going to go into the kitchen and the kitchen cabinets are going to be white against that gray wall. So I think it's going to look pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I'm impressed. Awesome. I love how y'all work together. <laughs> do you have Netflix? I do. There is a movie, the, um, what is it? The a school of good and evil or something like that with Carrie Washington and Charlize Theron. Is I it watched good? it. I watched it last night. It's cute. Have you watched Bad Sisters? No, I've never heard of Bad Sisters. Do you have Prime? Uh-huh. Girl. <laughs> Girl, just humor me and go through the first episode. It may seem a little slow. But okay. You know, it'll be 3 a.m. and you'll be holding your eyelids open. <laughs> and not get enough. It is okay. right up your alley. Just, okay. I, I have been quarantined since Tuesday. <laughs> so I am your walking, um, <laughs> streaming, whatever you want to call me. I, I'm it. I can tell you what not to watch. I watch Beast. How desperate could I? Oh, be? yes. I wanted to. Oh, is it good? No, you don't. No, oh. you don't. Love me some Idris Elba. And it never me even too. took his clothes off. It didn't even help. No. <laughs> no, that, no. <laughs> I, no. I saw That's like- Big said. scary lion? Man. That lion was okay. about as mechanical as Jaws. Okay? Oh. Oh. No. no. Okay. And well, I 
okay, if you don't want to hear this, then then shut us down now. <laughs> you don't want to hear us. But his daughters were a pain in the behind. <laughs> I told Tiffany, if you had been like that, I'd have let the line get you. <laughs> How many times do you have to hear, stay in the car, stay in the car? <laughs> and then, you know, what do you do? You get out the car. And I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> So no, I don't know. No, <laughs> no stars out of five. <laughs> My son-in-law said, do we have to finish this? I said, at some point he's going to get naked. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> and that never happened. But Bad Sisters was really, really, I thought of you and I watched it. Okay. And I said, this is right up your alley. So okay. give it a shot. Go I will, three episodes. I'll check that out. All right. All right. All right. All All right. right love. Okay, we'll feel better and I will talk to you later. Okay. <laughs>